This is tutorial 5-5 in GIS Workbook 2. In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to use mul multiple buffer zones. Uh, this can be helpful because you can find uh, values or number of items at set points, um, basically at different ranges. So it, it could be helpful. And this, this tutorial will show you how. Uh, we're going to start off by opening up our, our tutorial map. And we're going to be creating a buffer around a firehouse, a fire station. And we're going to find out how many structures are at different distances. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to use the search feature because there is no quick way to find it. You're going to put multiple ring buffer into the search engine and then click search. And then once this pops up, you just click on it. And what we're going to do is uh, first we have to select the, the fire station. Just like anything, when you ever do a buffer, you should select what you want to do. Uh, we should go to list by select. As you see, nothing is selectable. So we're going to click on fire stations. And as you can see, the, the select feature has become available now. Previously, nothing was selectable, so it grays out. So now we're going to click on that. We're going to click on the fire station. Come over here. And now we can use our buffer, or multiple ring buffer. So we're going to choose fire stations. And we're going to call it station one buffers. Okay, and in here is where we put the values. The first one is going to be 206, 2640. Then you hit the plus sign. Then they want us to enter 5280. Plus sign. And then 79020. Plus sign. They want us to use the buffer unit as feet and they want it to be set to dissolve, all. So then we're just going to click OK. It's going to do its thing. Uh, buffers can kind of take a while to to be produced. But once it is, we're going to add it to uh, To the map and we're going to place it right under major roads. Yours might look a little bit different. They assign the, the colors at random. So I just moved it to where it's above lot boundaries okay and uh, we're gonna want to see through it so we're just gonna go in and we're gonna change the transparency and display to 60 that way we can see the, the lot boundaries underneath it. And what they want us to do now is they want us to show you how it's selectable. Um, first, we're gonna, every, nothing is selected right now. As you can see, when I select it, 
just the outer ring and this inner ring, it's kind of like a donut, is selected. Same thing happens when I do the middle ring and then a circle for the, the innermost. So with that done, we're gonna clear that. And what they want us to do is we're going to find out how many structures are within each ring. Uh, so we're going to select the inner ring and work our way out. We're going to do this by a select by location. We're going to select features from building footprints. We're going to use the station one buffers as our source. Make sure the use selected features is checked. And in here, you're going to want to go all the way to the bottom, and you're going to choose features, have their centroid in the source layer features. Now what this does is, any building, some buildings might be partially in another ring. This will only select structures where the center of the building is in that ring. So a building should will not be selected more than once. With that done, we're just going to hit OK. And we're going to go to our select our list by selection and you're going to want to take down this number this 1380 uh, just write that down and what they want us to do now is, as a your turn is to go through and do this for all the other rings so we're just going to clear our selection use our select feature do the second ring select by location and it kind of makes it easy because it keeps everything the same so all we have to do is just hit OK. And we have a number for this. Don't jot down the fire stations at all because this isn't needed. We just need the structures. So with that done, we're going to click the last ring, select by location, OK again because everything stayed the same. And we have, as you can see, a new number. Now what they want to do is they want us to change the way our buffer looks. So we're going to clear all selection. We're going to go to the drawing, list by drawing. And they want us to go into the properties. And we're going to get rid of this. We're going to make that a zero again. And what we're going to do is quantities, graduated colors, and they want it done by distance. And they want the color to be a light blue to a blue. But they want the center one to be a dark one, so you're just going to flip the color. And that way it's going to be dark blue right where the, police, the fire station is, and then it's going to get gradually lighter. And here is where they want the numbers that we jotted down come into play. They want us to label them with those structures. Okay. So your map. And they want us to bring it right under flat boundaries. Or, I mean, uh, not lap boundaries, but footprint. And we'll just turn off lap boundaries just so we can see a little bit better. And you'd want to change this to number of structures. And right there, you have a pretty good map. So now they can look at this and find out that how many structures are in their radius at different points. And that's it for this tutorial.